Hi guys, welcome back to Bright Violet Arts. My name is Valerie and today I'm going to show you my process for creating Zen Doodle or as they are also called Zen Tangle designs. I'm going to break it down into a series of simple shapes and I'll show you the method I use to create gorgeous, intricate, one-of-a-kind pieces of art that are surprisingly simple and relaxing to draw. Today I'm using a set of paint pens that are dual-ended, so they are going to have both thin and thick lines for each color, and I, I really like that. That's important to me when I zen doodle because it adds a lot more variation and interest to the final design when there are two different line widths. Before I get started, I want to show you the very simple shapes that are going to make up my overall design. Uh, it looks complicated when you see the end result, but all I'm really going to do in, in the whole process is draw very simple shapes just repeated over and over. So I've got just some little botanicals, you know, leaves and flowers. I also really like hearts. You'll notice that in these shapes, some I'm doing with a thicker pen and some I'm doing with a finer pen. And then finally, I'm gonna have a little swirl. I often show this swirl just like part of it where it's kind of coming up from a corner like it is here, or a lot of times I'll show it um, buried under another object. So I'm not really drawing the whole swirl. I just draw like part of it peeking out from some other object. Once the first layer of paint pen is dry, then you will have an opportunity to use a second layer or a third layer to add additional details on top, usually with the finer nib pen. Next up, I'm gonna show you how I draw mandalas. I typically start with a perfect circle. I just draw one perfect circle using a circle template, but if you don't have a circle template, another good option is to use coins. Um, just some pocket change is a great way to get different size circles for something like this. But once you have your circle, then I like to fill it in with symmetrical doodles. I usually start in the middle, but you don't have to. But everything that I do to one part of the circle, I'm going to go directly across the circle and do the same thing again. Because the most important part of a mandala is to maintain the symmetry as best you can. Whenever I start a mandala or any Zen doodle for that matter, I never really know what it's going to look like when I'm done. It's all very stream of consciousness. I just kind of pick a shape and then make that shape around the circle to where it all matches. And then I pick another shape and I do it again. And that way the mandala just kind of blooms up on its own. It's kind of, kind of magical in a way. The best tip I have for maintaining symmetry is to work back and forth across the circle rather than going around the circle like in a clockwise or counterclockwise motion. Okay, to get started, I'm gonna use a circle template to create a skeleton for my mandalas. And by that, I just mean random sized circles in a random placement, just a few, not too many. So now I'm gonna build upon these circles with mandala designs, just a little. I'm gonna try to keep it simple. I don't want them to get so big that they completely overwhelm the whole page. Gotta make sure that there's plenty of space available for all the other types of doodles. I've moved on to a new circle over here. And for this one, I'm gonna use something that looks like flower petals to me but they're kind of short and stubby and then little spokes in the middle. The designs that I choose for my mandala are usually just very simple like dots or semicircles or squares or triangles. It's, it's nothing fancy. It's just very plain geometric shapes that I repeat in a symmetrical pattern around a circle. That's it. So I, I just want to address kind of a misconception or a myth about Zen Doodle designs like this. The myth is that something like this requires a ton of patience and it takes forever to do. As far as the length of time that I spent on this project today, 
Uh, I believe the runtime on this video is just a little bit under 11 minutes and it's not edited all that much. I think I doubled the speed of my drawing clips on here, but it only took me 26 minutes from start to finish. And I've gotta say just for me, and it might, it might be based on my own personality or it might be something that is common to other people and their experiences, I don't know. But for me, like that 26 minutes goes really, really fast. I'm never sitting there stressing like, oh no, I have so much more to finish. It's not like that. It's an experience of um, enjoying each little detail, enjoying the way that it looks, the way, it's almost like a motion is happening. Like there's this evolution of the page. And the whole time that I'm drawing it, I'm in control of that evolution. I get to watch the design take shape and uh, take over an empty canvas. And I don't know if that's goofy or not, but to me it's exciting and that feeling is very therapeutic. And maybe that's the reason that people undertake drawings like this as therapy. It is certainly a way to um, take time out from any day-to-day -day stressors while you focus on something in the abstract realm. So now I've moved on to my fine point paint pen to put in these flower details. And I, I do that because I, I'm running out of room, honestly. It's, it's just because the canvas is getting full. And so now most of the details in the leftover space are going to have to be small details or details that are done with a fine point pen. The rules that I have for filling up the canvas are pretty much anything goes except that I don't like for my doodles to get too crowded. I try not to run them all the way into each other. I try to leave a tiny little margin between each different drawing. And I also like to do clusters. The smaller the doodles get, the more in number I like to have of each doodle, if that makes sense. So like the hearts are really tiny, so I'm gonna have a whole bunch of hearts. Uh, the mandalas, though, those are large, so I'm just going to do one at a time. I'm not going to cluster those. Another rule is just simply to work from, from big objects to small. If you put your larger objects in, like as I did with the mandalas, if you do that first, then that lets you know how much real estate is left over for the smaller doodles, and it helps you fit them into the space that is available. So now I'm getting into the second stage, which is like layering more paint pen on top of the first layer. Um, this is also something you can do with markers or fine liners. It does not have to be paint pen, but I do like to go back over the larger doodles with a finer nib and add additional decorations on top. I do wanna tell you guys how worried I was about this weirdo shape that is in here right now. Um, in the end, I really liked the way it looked. It was probably my favorite part of the whole doodle. But at the time I was drawing this, I was like, oh my God, what have I done? This is like a four-legged freaky flower. What is this? But that is just the nature of Zen doodling. It is um, sometimes gonna inspire freaky freaky doodles and you don't know what's coming out of your subconscious sometimes that's good news and sometimes it's not I'm adding some little ovals to fill up last minute extra spaces and here I'm going back to a mandala that I did with a large paint pen nib I'm just doing the details with a fine point nib to give a second layer of dimension Everything starts to get really fun at the end when you've already put in all of your details that have structure or take a lot of concentration to draw. Then you can go back with a second layer, like a fine point nib or a fine liner, um, if that's what you're using, and just fly right over the top of all of the doodles. It doesn't take any thought or preparation because it's all lined up for you in your previous work, but it's nice to go over the top and then add that layer of glamour to the overall doodle. I'm 
I'm going to use my beige fine line paint pen to add a third layer to this mandala just because I think it adds even more texture, even more dimension. It really elevates the whole drawing for me to add those final layers at the end. Okay guys, what do you think? This is the final outcome of our Zen Doodle session today. I hope that you got, you know, kind of the gist of how the drawings flow, how you fill the space as it presents itself, and how you really spend time being mindful of one detail and only one detail at a time. All right, guys, thanks again for checking out this video. I'm always so happy to share work with you and ideas and inspiration over at Bright Violet Arts.